Welcome to the Business Finishing School Podcast. Stop the insanity. Eliminate the chaos. Bring simplicity, probability, and leverage as operating values into your business and personal life so you can do more, earn more, and improve your relationships. This is Business Growth Simplified. Here's your host, Business Finishing School founder, Rick Sapio. All right, I love that opening bit. Morgan, thank you so much for creating that. Welcome to the Business Finishing School podcast. And I am very happy to be on the phone with our longest running member of Business Finishing School, Dr. Dustin Barton, who is in Alaska right now. Wait, actually, where are you right now, sir? Fargo, North Dakota, Rick. Fargo, North Dakota. What was that? That's probably further north than Alaska, right? Uh, we, might need fir- to look at a, we might need to look at a map for you. <laughs> the first time I met Dustin uh, was about 10 years ago, and he invited me to speak at an event in Fargo, North Dakota. And I said, I will never go to Fargo, North Dakota. But then I got curious when there was an oil boom there. And uh, we had a good time. It took, what, about two years to get up there? Uh, I think it was two years. When you landed, you wondered uh, how you know, I convinced uh, you to get up here. And uh, it, was a, it was a good weekend. We had, what, 60, 80 people that showed up. And you could see Seattle. That's what you told me when you landed. You could see all the way to the uh, Pacific Ocean from here because it is pretty flat. It's pretty flat and cold. So before I get into my questions of you, uh, why do you think you've been a member of BFS for 10 years? You know, that's, that's pretty easy, Rick. Um, over the years, I've, uh, as a child, I watched my parents in being entrepreneurs. And uh, I saw the goods and the bads, saw the highs and the lows. And uh, knowing that when I came out of school that I wanted to launch my own business and now businesses, um, by seeing that they had to sacrifice a lot, compromise a lot where it was always work and then uh, not as much play, not leveraging people, I knew that uh, that wasn't something that I wanted to specifically pursue. If that's what it was to be an entrepreneur, um, it wasn't for me. And uh, so that's when I found Business Finishing School about 10 years ago. And when I listened to what the philosophical premises were, the foundation, the direction that it was going, I knew that's what I'd been looking for because I'd already been in business for about a year and a half, two years. And uh, although we were uh, successful in moving forward, it just seemed like something was missing and it was uh, more of the foundation that was missing. Yep, and so for the sake of the audience, what would you, I know you're in several businesses now, when I first met you, you were in one, but what are the the several businesses you have now? Yeah, we have a a metabolic center, uh, so people helping people with uh, lifestyle related issues uh, from type two diabetes to just simple weight loss uh, uh, solutions. We also have a chiropractic office. We now have two, excuse me, We have two offices, and then uh, we also have a gym, and then I do personal business coaching. Awesome. So what module do you think, when you think about the the, the 10 years that you've been involved in the program, what module of the 48 modules of Business Finishing School has had the biggest impact on you and your business? You know, a lot of people have asked that, uh, that are looking to be prospective members when I meet them at the uh, BFS Summit down in Dallas, and... Quite honestly, I would like to say that there's one, and you could probably say the same thing, Rick, that uh, you'd like to pull out one, but there's really not one. But if I had to be chosen, um, it would have to be values-based decision-making because no matter what we do in our life and in our business, we always find ourselves coming back to that to make sure that the decision decisions are sound and that we're always working from the same foundation. And as our lives move forward and as our businesses move forward, um, different things change. Uh, you know, your perspective in life changes and you have to make sure that you're reanalyzing and reassessing the direction that you're moving in life. And it's helped us create more businesses. Uh, it's also helped us uh, reduce uh, some of the mess that we've created in the past by uh, who we're surrounded by as far as friends, how we raise our children uh, in a personal life. And then as uh, far as business goes, uh, we just most recently decided to split ways in a partnership because it no longer aligned with what we originally set out to do. So Values-based decision-making by far has been the best. And then it just leads into every module after that to hiring, to, um, you know, simplicity on the far side of complexity for those that are part of uh, BFS that know those modules. Mm-hmm. How, I don't want to ask specifics because we're going to go down a rabbit hole, but how, how would 
Did you say your revenue has grown percentage wise since you started? Well, we, when I first met you, uh, we were doing well. And, um, right now, as far as with one business, uh, we've doubled that and we're keeping it, uh, there, which is why we opened a second chiropractic office because in our industry, uh, if you have a too large of an office, you have to be a chiropractor in the state of North Dakota to own a chiropractic office. So we're kind of pigeonholed. So we had to open another office to keep uh, moving in that direction. Uh, so it's always a saleable business. Otherwise we can trap ourselves in a terrible situation because we'd have to find the right chiropractor. But uh, so that's on the chiropractic side of things. Uh, right now we went from about, I think we were at about 190 some thousand when we first met you revenue wise and we're over a, um, a million. And we've also um, not only revenue wise, but our profit is that much better, Rick. So I know a lot of people like to know revenue, but our profit's so much better because we're slimming down on the expenses. We've learned to negotiate. Everything's negotiable as you've uh, directed us uh, within business finishing school. And we've uh, found better vendors and better ways to conduct business. How many business growth summits have you been to? What have we had? 16. So uh, it must we've be had, 16, right? We've had 16. We're working on 17. Yeah. And what would you say is the biggest takeaway? Uh, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you a two part question. Biggest takeaway from one of our 16 summits you've been to. I know it's hard to think back uh, 10 years, but, and also who is the most impactful speaker that isn't part of the program that you've heard? One of the outside speakers that we brought in. So most impactful, uh, takeaway from the events and then most impactful speaker? I think one of the most impactful takeaways has always been that um, it's not industry specific and I really enjoy that because uh, you get to hear what other people are doing in their professions, their industries. You get to take away some tidbits that uh, how everybody's coming from a solid foundation and it's not different per industry and to hear that over and over uh, it builds your mindset to have more clarity that this is the right thing to do that trying to do it on your own and grabbing something from one event and then another event and another event, all these different add-ons that are marketed to us as business owners uh, become very confusing where with business finishing school, when you go to the summit, you're coming back to the same family over and over that knows where they're coming from and comes from the same foundational principles. And that uh, has easily been the best takeaway is knowing that you're going to have the same conversation on a business mindset versus try this, try that, try this, try that, which you see way too much of. There's a lot of information out there and people want to look for the next magic bullet. We're at the summits. It's just get back to the foundation and work on your business and work on your life. And uh, when you leave it to come back six months later and to see the growth of other people, including yourselves from the accountability measures that you set out, um, there's, nothing, there's nothing more exciting than to see the growth of another individual in another business. Uh, as far as speakers go, uh, I think that fits perfectly into uh, your good friend, Rand. Um, he really has come up with uh, the mindset of how we go from being a victim to a superhero. And I, I love that concept, the triangle that uh, he spoke upon. And uh, if there was one individual, if I had to choose one individual to see again over and over because I've seen him and heard him twice now in person, I didn't hear the same message even though he probably said something very similar because my mind was in a different place based upon how he helped shift my mindset. Awesome. So that's Rand Stegen of the Stegen Leadership Institute. How do you think the business finishing school summits differ from other events that you go to? You know, I think I kind of answered uh, a little bit of that, but I'll elaborate in a little bit more. Um, it's not, you, you guys are not looking for anything to be an add on. You're looking for it to be a continuation. And there's too many marketing uh, gurus out there that are saying, you know, this is what worked for best, best for me. If you do the way I did business, you'll be successful. And with business finishing school, when you go to the summit, you're digging into what's going to be working best for your company based upon solid proven principles that are used in for, with fortune 500 companies. So, um, you know, as I said, many times uh, that we say around here is just add water because it's working everywhere else, but most, most small businesses try to recreate the wheel instead of understanding that uh, someone else has already done it for them. They just got to keep moving forward. Yeah. What's interesting with your answers and hearing you, it, it brings me back to why we started B BFS. 
we're meat and potatoes. We're looking for people that want to have good families, good businesses, wealth creation over the long haul. And you touched on it. There's way too much flash in the world today and flash gets you nowhere. Um, and it's sad. What is something you want people to know about BFS that you have not touched on so far? Well, BFS uh, is a business program cleverly hidden within it is personal development. And I truly appreciate that because you cannot separate the two. How you are doing what you're doing in business is going to be reflected in your business. And it's going to also be reflected in your personal life. So there's been many events that have been pitched to me over the years and many others that if you come here, this will grow your business. And they forget about the people that are left at home when we're all working. And you guys have a strong story behind why the business exists and what you want to do for the entrepreneurs and the, the team leaders that are coming into those weekends and the people that are black belts, which is you want them to have better homes. You want them to have more freedom. You want them to have more simplicity. And for those that are listening, if you're looking for more simplicity, more freedom, more financial gains and a better home life, this has been one of the easiest decisions that we've made moving forward, which is why it's been the only thing consistently we've done for nine plus years. And we've never once thought about missing a business boot camp uh, or summit event. And it's on our calendar every year, just like clockwork. Well, I'm glad that you're t touching on the family and the employees as well. What do you think the biggest impact has been on your family and on your employees as a result of this program? Well, good thing that we're doing audio with this, that nobody can see this visually because uh, I'll probably choke up a little bit here because it's the holiday season um, and we're only, what, four days away from uh, Christmas. My mother passed away about three months ago and uh, had we not had these rhythms and rituals set up where my, it's, my kids and I and my wife would call my mom and my father every Monday night from 8 to 8.15 minimum to have no other agenda, just to have a conversation. And uh, we did that. We were blessed enough to do that for about four years. Uh, my oldest is going to be six New Year's Day. My youngest is three and a half. So we started when my son was roughly about two. And for him to remember his grandma's voice, um, to this day, over the last three months, that's what he continues to talk about. So it's way beyond business. Um, it's a legacy that we've created for our children. And now they actually remember grandma because I wouldn't say we avoided not talking to my family because I've always been close, but we made it a scheduled rhythm every week and we never missed it for four plus years. And to see the joy in my kid's face and to remember grandma's voice and how she treated him on the phone, um, you can't. You can't replace that. And I think anybody that is close to their family or perhaps knows that they need to work on the inner workings of their family, if I could suggest you do one thing is for just 10, 15 minutes a week, just explain to the other person the agenda is simply have a conversation. There's no hidden agendas. Um, don't ask for favors. Just hear their voice. Understand that one day uh, life will change. And um, as I said to my dad after my mom passed, Probably the best thing that I've decided to do in life is have that 15 minute call every Monday. And what Dustin is referring to is we encourage all of our members to rhythmicize and calendarize all the important aspects of life, including date night and time with your kids and workout times and time with your parents, et cetera. And it's such a simple thing, but I have learned, uh, having taught thousands of people, some of these concepts, unless they're going to an event and they're, uh, inside of an accountability group and it's talked about it just won't happen and so people forget about the accountability piece when they're trying to implement something what about with your employees what have you seen uh the power of the power of ownership and the power of taking responsibility for their own outcomes um we use the values more than ever in our businesses where if uh we believe that uh you know and if seen that someone is late for work or they are doing something that is outside of the norms of what uh, we preach. Um, it's simply just asking them what values have you compromised versus in the past it was bringing up the idea that Mary, we saw you doing this. This isn't right. You should know that this is what the business stands for. Now, before we hire somebody, 
they know the values and they agree that these are the expectations and if they compromise them, the direction that the company will go with or without them. So the idea that they own the values themselves within the company and they know that uh, when they compromise the values that uh, there's decisions that need to be made. And they also know that I don't have to be around Rick for decisions to be made. They're made through the lens of our values and our priorities of the company, which has allowed me to release myself from them thinking they always have to ask me and giving them the power, which I believe all businesses should for the top employees and all employees alike to make decisions to keep the business moving forward because one day I won't be there and one day they won't be there. So the business just keeps operating and operating, and operating from the same foundations. And um, I, I believe that is what I continue to hear from our team members is the idea that where they've worked in the past, they weren't given the ability to make decisions. It always had to check in with somebody. And the reason they can make decisions within our company is we've laid out the business foundations from what we've learned in BFS and they just have to follow the rules of the company and we don't wake them up on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. So um, to see people empowered is probably one of the best things and to know that they want longevity within a company, especially when you work on uh, the hiring process, our hiring process that we follow takes anywhere from two to two weeks to a month for someone to come through and get hired. And uh, when you go through that long of a process, um, when you make a decision to hire them and they make a decision to be on board, there's a lot more loyalty versus just hiring them overnight. So uh, they own the company moving forward and it's fun to watch them be empowered. I love it. So, you know, it's interesting to hear you talk about the concepts from BFS and what we want the listeners to understand is we are trying to simplify your day, simplify your life, ultimately simplify your business so that you're creating something that runs on its own. So you have simplicity, probability and leverage in your life. And I don't think enough people are talking about this. When you talk about big companies, Dustin, what it reminds me of is even the smallest one employee company can incorporate large company principles to get scale. And that's what simplicity, probability and leverage is all about. So if this resonates with you, show up, join the program, come to our summit events. All the information is at businessfinishingschool.com. Dr. Dustin Barton, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. We've come to spend a lot of time together over the last 10 years. Thank you for uh, everything that you bring to the table at BFS and all the people that you've brought from Alaska, I'm sorry, Fargo, North Dakota over the years. You're probably responsible for 100 uh, people, not 100 separate people, but people coming over and over and over over the years. And we appreciate your commitment, not only to business finishing school, but to your yourself and your family and your constituents, employees, and the community. Any final words, sir? I just got to say thank you for those that are listening that, uh, you know, if you want more simplicity in your life and um, right now it's complex and you're looking for more clarity, uh, give uh, Business Finishing School a look because it was something that, uh, it was new when I came on board. There was nobody that uh, recruited me to say, check this out. Here's the, the idea of what it will be. We were the first ones to come through it, even though the foundations have been out there. So uh, it's, it's proven. Talk to us, show up to the event. And uh, Rick, I got to say, uh, it's been a great pleasure. One of, honestly, other than just being a business uh, finishing school black belt member, it's easily been one of the most beneficial decisions I made because of the quality of person that you are and the people that you attract to these events that have only helped uh, those that I'm surrounded with grow. And most importantly, as I touch base with, uh, with my mom and dad, um, I'm getting goosebumps even thinking about it of what could have been and the regrets I would have had had I not put these simple things in place. So I'm forever grateful for you. You are welcome, my brother from another mother. To get your tickets, go to bfssummit.com. All right. We're signing off. This is the Business Finishing School podcast. Thank you, Morgan, for putting this all together for us. We appreciate you very much. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Finishing School podcast, where we teach you business growth simplified. For more information on Business Finishing School or their Business Growth Summit event, visit businessfinishingschool.com.
Thank you for tuning in to the Business Finishing School Podcast, where we teach you business growth simplified. For more information on Business Finishing School or their Business Growth Summit event, visit businessfinishingschool.com.